Meet Abigail, the remarkable woman who changed everything you know. There are ordinary people, and then there are those extraordinary individuals who can completely alter the course of your life when you cross paths with them. That's precisely what happened to David when he encountered a very special woman named Abigail. This extraordinary tale unfolds after David had just lost his mentor, Samuel. You can find this in 1 Samuel 25, which mentions, Now Samuel died, and all Israel assembled and mourned for him, and they buried him at his house in Ramah. Then David left and went down to the wilderness of Paran. That's when we meet Abigail. And here's where the real adventure begins. There was this guy in Maon named Nabal, and he was loaded. I'm talking about owning 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. That's some serious wealth. But there was a catch. Nabal wasn't the nicest guy around. In fact, he was pretty harsh and not the best to deal with. He was a Calabite, which was a big deal back in the day. Now, when it comes to riches, there are a few flavors. Some people think riches are all about what you own, like the size of your bank account or the things you've collected. Others believe it's about what you do or what you know. But there's a deeper kind of richness, the one that comes from your character, who you are, and what you stand for. Abigail, well, she was rich in character. You see, it was the season for sheep shearing, and that meant it was time for a big feast and tons of hospitality. The name Nabal actually means fool, which tells you something about his character. In ancient Israel, names were often linked to a person's character, and in Nabal's case, he pretty much lived up to it. But Abigail, Nabal's wife, was a whole different story. She was not just stunningly beautiful, but she was also incredibly wise. When the Bible calls her beautiful, it's worth noting that this phrase was only used for a select few women, like Rachel and Esther. Abigail was on another level. You might wonder, how did a guy like Nabal end up with a woman like Abigail? So, David, who had heard that Nabal was shearing his sheep, sent 10 of his guys to greet Nabal in the most polite way. David was like, hey Nabal, I hope you're doing well and may peace be with you, your family, and all your stuff. David heard that a guy named Nabal had some workers taking care of sheep. David and his crew had helped protect Nabal's sheep and shepherds in the past, and they never took anything for it. David figured it was time for Nabal to return the favor. So, David sent some of his guys to talk to Nabal politely. They said, hey, we've been pretty cool to you, and today's a good day. Could you give us something for our hard work? It's only fair. See, David didn't just demand stuff from Nabal. He reminded him of the good deeds they had done and wanted Nabal to share some of the good stuff they had. Nabal, on the other hand, was a real jerk about it. He acted like he didn't even know who David was, even though David was famous. He said, why should I give my food and water to some strangers? I have no idea where they're from. When David's messengers told him what Nabal said, he got pretty mad. He and his men got ready for a fight. Some 400 of them put on their swords, and 200 stayed behind to guard their stuff. So, to sum it up, David asked Nabal for a fair share of the goodies they helped protect, but Nabal was rude and refused. David got Nabal's message loud and clear. It was an outright insult. David was a tough and skilled fighter, so Nabal wasn't dealing with a pushover. In modern terms, if David were talking today, he'd have told his crew to gear up. He was ready for a showdown, and it wasn't one of David's finest moments. His reaction to the insult didn't align with what God would want. Responding with love and kindness, even when people do you wrong, that's taking the high road. Interestingly, David had shown patience and kindness to Saul, even when Saul was hostile. But when it came to Nabal, someone he saw as an equal or beneath him, it seemed harder for him. David had around 400 men with him, not for a friendly visit, but with the intention to take Nabal down. So, they geared up and left some folks behind to guard their stuff and provide backup. Now, a young man who worked for Nabal told Abigail, Nabal's wife, what happened. He shared that David had sent messengers to bless and greet their master, but Nabal treated them with contempt. However, David's crew had been good to them when they were in the fields, protecting them day and night. This young man knew that evil was brewing because of Nabal's actions. Nabal had reviled David's men, which means he insulted and disrespected them. 
Abigail had to act quickly. She took a load of food, wine, and supplies without telling her husband, Nabal. As she was coming down the mountain, she met David and his men. Abigail's quick thinking and actions showed wisdom, and they were needed in this situation. In a way, Abigail did what Nabal should have done, but didn't. The fact that she could gather so much food in such a short time highlights Nabal's wealth. His unkind response to David was even more disappointing because he had plenty to share. David was furious. He thought, I've been protecting everything this guy owns out in the wilderness, and he repays me with evil instead of good? No way! May God punish David's enemies even worse if there's a single guy from his crew left by mourning. You see, David was angry, and he was ready to take action. He was thinking about going after Nabal and all the guys in his group. This was David's plan, and it's what most people would expect in this situation. Even Nabal's own servants saw it coming. From 1 Samuel, chapter 25, verses 23 to 31, David had the facts right, but his heart was in the wrong place. He was set on getting back at Nabal, even if it meant taking the lives of Nabal and his guys. This kind of response was expected, even by Nabal's own servants. But then, something interesting happened. When Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey and knelt before him, showing deep respect. She humbly said, Blame me for everything, and listen to what I have to say. Don't pay attention to that foolish guy Nabal. The Lord has kept you from taking matters into your own hands. Let your enemies be as self-destructive as Nabal. Abigail's actions and words changed the game and made David reconsider his plan. Now, imagine this. Abigail, a wise woman, brought a special gift for David, and she wanted him to share it with his young men. She was super polite and asked for forgiveness for any mistakes she might have made. Abigail believed that David was destined for greatness, and she thought he was fighting for what's right. She assured him that his life was precious to God, and anyone trying to harm him would have a tough time. She even said that God would help David become a great leader of Israel. Then, one day, as the land was full of hills and hiding spots, Abigail spotted David. She approached him while leading a group of people with lots of gifts and food. Imagine David's surprise. He was feeling a bit stressed when, out of the blue, this wonderful woman came with a big gift offering. She bowed in front of him, and it was a pretty unexpected and lovely moment for David. David and his crew were hit with an unexpected pause. It caught David off guard, and he wasn't sure how to react. In the blink of an eye, a woman named Abigail hopped off her donkey, 